We welcome you to the August the 2nd, uh, 2020 uh, Sunday School lesson. And we're coming out of uh, all right. Bible <clears throat> Studies for Life. If you've got your quarter, uh, our lesson is on page 110. And uh, if you have your Bible, just go ahead and turn to Ephesians 3. 14 through 21, that's where our passage will come from. But our, our lesson is we pray for one another. And this is session two of, of a, um, a unit we have here. It's called, Why Do I Need the Church? And um, again, the point is the church is strengthened as we pray. Um, we again, we'll be looking at Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Um, with that being said, I just want to say a, f a few words before we get in. I just want to go ahead and jump into the lesson. Bob, uh, <clears throat> Bob last week, uh, he gave a good description of Ephesus. Ephesus was a major, major uh, port city. Uh, it, was, uh, it was probably one of the, the biggest for the economy uh, in the world at that time. Well, I know it was. But um, today's lesson, it really doesn't matter that much. It was written to the Ephesians. But um, today's le uh, lesson is about a prayer that Paul uh, had written for the uh, Ephesians. So re all remember that through this, this lesson, that this is a prayer. Now we know that Paul, we know he was a strong believer in prayer. And... Um, he had already wrote another prayer uh, in this book in chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And in this lesson, we will see Paul again prayed for the Ephesians. Uh, what we'll find out in this, uh, Paul was praying that they know God's love and that they know God's power. But uh, Paul's main desire in this, in this prayer was that God be glorified. And that should be, that should be everyone that's a Christian. That should be our desire, that our lives and our actions will, be, uh, will glorify God. So with that being said, let's turn to the first section here. And uh, the subtitle here is Pray for the Power and Presence of Christ to be Manifested Through His Church. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, read verses. Uh, I won't read all the verses here and then come back and do uh, in this section and then come back and do them individually. But it says in 14, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. And we will split up the verse 17, but I um, went ahead and read the whole verse there. Now, in verse 14, we see he says here, for this cause. Now, Paul, in the first verses 1 through 13 of this chapter, uh, Paul gives a de uh, definition to his special calling and his, mi uh, his ministry. So that's where you get that for this cause. And then he goes into 14. And he says, I bow my knees. Now, back in those days, just about all the Jewish people, they prayed standing up. Uh, and sometimes they would raise their hands when they would pray. But they prayed standing up. Now, we have several examples in the Bible where Jewish uh, leaders and so forth would... Uh, would bow. We know King Solomon bowed at the dedication of the temple when they had it completed. Daniel, he regularly prayed on his knees. And we know that Jesus knelt to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
So there's times in the Bible where uh, the Jewish people uh, would would bow. Uh, but now bowing in that time, bowing showed the ultimate respect, uh, the reverence of uh, if you bow before somebody, the, uh, the reverence and uh, 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 it was just the, it showed total respect to a person. And especially when when you was asking aid for them, uh, so uh, that's what uh, bowing. And you know, I love I love Paul here. He's I bow on my knees. He states that right off the off the get go. And he, he says here unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he made it known quick who he was praying to. It right here, just the opening of this prayer. Now let's, uh, in 15, he says, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now in 15 here, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. When we pray, we are to recognize that God is not our, God is not only our heavenly father, but he is also the father of all that is. Um, Recognizing our God as the creator helps us approach the Father with proper awe and humil humility. That's, that's a big key in, in your prayer life, acknowledging he is the creator, creator of it all. And uh, his, uh, we, we should approach him. We, we can't let our concept of uh, God as Father as we see it here in our concept be uh, uh, be influenced by our concept of God. He is mighty. He is powerful. He deserves all of our respect. The, uh, the King James uses the word uh, fear a lot, but it's just all in respect. Um, I can't stand, I absolutely despise to hear the somebody say the man upstairs that's just that's, I, I hate that uh, he's, he deserves more respect and um, he, uh, reverence than that but even though we say this though God is the perfect model of what fathers should be to their children here on earth he is the perfect model but we should always when we go before God, we should always understand and reverence Him. And yes, we can have a very personal relationship, and it can be closer than our humanly fathers. But He always deserves, excuse me there, He always deserves that respect and honor. And then in 16, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Um, in 16, according to the riches of his glory. God always brings to his children uh, uh, out of abundance uh, of his. He always gives us this. Glorious riches, unlimited resources, and the wealth of his glory. And we see in this verse to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. This means our souls will be strengthened by his spirit through prayer. And um, there is no doubt about that. that uh, and then in 17, uh, it says uh, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Now this 17 is 17a. So we're only going to look at the first half here. Um, we see here that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Now remember here, Paul is talking to believers. He's not talking about uh, an initial uh, conversion experience here. He's talking uh, about believers. And uh, Paul's desire was that th their faith convictions would be so strong that Christ would be completely at home in their lives. Also, they would know the strengthening fullness of his presence day in and day out. Paul was, you know, again, that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Paul is, is wanting, uh, he's wanting us to, to pray, and this, this prayer is, is, is 
it's for us today. I mean, this this prayer is very strong. And uh, he's just wanting, again, that we be so close to him in our prayer life that, that he's got, he dwells in our hearts. And that's by faith. Um, so that's end of 17a. Let's go to our second section. And that's pray for a deeper sense of God's love. Pray for a deeper sense of God's love. And then this is uh, the second section of uh, 17, but I want to read all, all three of these verses in this section. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know that the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. Going back now to 17b, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love, this is just a double metaphor here. It's one, it's a biological, and one, it's a, a architectural. Uh, rooted in love. Uh, plants, it, you know, we're talking about plants here, you know, they're rooted in the ground. They have to have their roots to provide nourishment and essential to growth. And then we see here, grounded, um, grounded in love. Rooted in love was the first in the plants. Grounded in love is the, that's the foundation or uh, around here we call the footing of a, a building. It's the foundation. Uh, nothing, you can build the finest home and if, if you don't put down a foundation, it's not gonna stand long. I, I, I love to think about uh, mighty buildings a lot of times and uh, the guys, it's uh, my buddies in um, my Sunday school class, I'm always talking about the Apollo program. I love the Apollo moon program. Well, I think about the uh, vertical assembly building down at uh, the Kennedy Space Center. And um, if you've ever been down there, you'll, you'll, no doubt you'll see it. It looks like a giant box. But they started that building in 1963 and that was to build the, uh, the mighty Saturn V that would carry us to the moon. And they had the, uh, the foundation, uh, they had uh, 4,225 4, beams to start it. And they had to go 164 feet into the ground to get to bedrock, and that is Florida. And uh, they were able to finish it in 1966 but um, it ended up being, uh, it's 526 feet high, it's still one of the biggest buildings in the world, and uh, they've used it for the shuttle program, and now our new program, the STS, they're still using the building, they refurbished it out. Incredible building, but uh, that's a long way to have to drive uh, 4,225 beams, and, uh, so uh, y'all don't get, get on me too hard because I remember Stu one time, I think it was talking about the Empire State Building. Stu was talking about the foundation. But what we get out of this is, in this verse, getting back on subject, when we get the nourishment from prayer, it's just like being rooted in, in, in those roots, those roots, when we're, we're getting our nourishment from prayer, and our prayer life and uh, praying to him, we'll start building a very strong foundation that we can uh, have a mighty, mighty, instead of a mighty building, we'll have a mighty relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And uh, now I wanna look at uh, 18. Maybe it says, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tie it back into 14, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height. Now in 18 here, 
Paul prayed that the Christians would begin to comprehend the love that God has for his people, to try to wrap our minds around his love and the, uh, the breadth, the length and depth and height. You know, as hard as we try, we, we, we can't comprehend God's love. Um, it, it's just our infinite minds. But, um, you know, that's what Paul was talking here. He was praying that, you know, the people understand how great his, uh, his love will be. Well, and let me look, keep going to 19, and this is still, Paul's still uh, praying on this subject. In 19, it says, And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And it says here, Know the love of Christ passes knowledge. Even though we talked about being rooted and grounded, uh, we still will never have a full, absolute understanding of God's love in Christ. Um, and I love that. I, I love that. I love that... Uh, uh, we will. It will never be ex exhausted. Uh, no matter how much you study, because uh, if it did, then it would go into works. But it's just amazing to me. The more, the more I study the Bible, the more I feel like I don't really know nothing. And I love that. I, I love that it's always refresh. I've, you know, I've told a lot of y'all, and we've talked about it. It's like I'll see, um, I'll see part of scripture that I've, I know I've read over and over and over, and it, it, something will pop up, and I don't even, I don't, don't remember that, and it, it's, it's so new and uh, a new meaning, and uh, it'll be when uh, it's always with the Holy Spirit. It always seems like it's right on time when you need to hear that word. Uh, but Paul's prayer here was that his readers be full of God's presence and power. And again, that is the, the theme of this, of this, uh, this prayer that, that uh, we're looking at. But, um, but again, you'll always grow deeper and his love and grace will become greater and greater the more you study and pray, study his word and pray. Uh, it it will become greater and greater, and that foundation is there because you it's being fed. You're rooted in Christ, and it will become again greater and greater. Now I want to look uh, finish up here in uh, our third section, and it's pray that God would be glorified through His church. And that's verse 20 through 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ through all ages, world without end. Amen. In verse 20 here, Paul prayed unto him that is able. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think accordingly to the power that worketh in us. Again, Paul prayed unto him that is able. Paul prayed boldly because he had a confidence in God's ability. He knew God's ability. And because of God's ability and power, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God does his amazing work according to the power that worketh in us. And uh, so here we are talking about God's unique power and ability that only he possess. There's no other place. Uh, there's no uh, other place, the power, the peace. Uh, your whole life is in prayer and um, I, I wish my prayer I'll be the first I'm not standing up here and saying I got a A plus uh, prayer life my prayer life needs to be improved a lot but his power is it's un, unparalleled it's unmatched and it's 
His power has raised Christ from the dead, and it changes a believer's heart. You know, I, I can't help but think as I'm reading this, Paul's conversion, uh, the writer of this, we're looking at Paul's conversion to me on the road to Damascus. We know how how he was uh, he was uh, in uh, he was an enemy of the uh, Christians, and we all know that. And uh, but you know everybody everybody a lot of times they talk about the uh, the conversion of uh, the bright light and make a big deal about that. But to me the greatest the greatest miracle of that is not the, the bright lights from heaven and uh, God talking to him. It was uh, uh, Jesus talking to him. It was uh, his conversion of his heart. How he was a completely new person. And when we accept Jesus Christ, that happens to us. And um, the only person, the only way that can happen is through Jesus Christ. We, we, we don't have any kind of power like that. And um, as, when, you know, <clears throat> when somebody gets saved, uh, we all like to rejoice, but we're seeing probably one of the great, well, I know we are, one of the greatest miracles that there is. A person has changed. They've changed their old ways. They've got a new heart. It's a new beginning, a new birth. And then here in 21, I want to finish up. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> you know, all through this this lesson, we see uh, that Paul prayed uh, uh all through this that he, he prayed would take the place in the lives of his readers individually. We see he's challenging them, uh, praying for them. And, uh, but again, what I said at the very start, this was to bring God glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Furthermore, a church will bring glory to the Father as it is focused on Christ as its head. Let me say that again. Furthermore, a church will bring glory to the Father as it is focused on Christ as its head. I want to talk about our church a little bit here. And <clears throat> I'm not casting stones. I don't have nobody singly in mind. But I do know I'm not going to stand up here and... Uh, put my head in the sand we've got we got some problems right now things are down uh, I do know I understand our morale is low and uh, but I just want to ask are we focused on Christ as being the head of Blue Ridge View <clears throat> are we really doing that are we focused on getting our way are we focused on being out of our comfort zone Are we focused on our culture, our world, <clears throat> our worldly problems, especially COVID-19? And I'm going to tell you, I'm frustrated. I've been through this, and, you know, I don't want to be a holier than thou here because I've, I've been frustrated about everything I've just mentioned here. I have felt all those things at one time. But when I start really, really getting frustrated, I have that, that and I slow down enough <clears throat> to have my quiet time, that still small voice of the Holy Spirit says, my power is still great. My love is still great. My plan is still great. It's like, uh, I know y'all find it hard to believe, but... Uh, I, I had to get a paddling every now and then, and uh, my dad would would always do that. And uh, but uh, my mom could just look at me. And that was 
that was so heartbreaking. Uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I'd feel so ashamed. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather take the belt than that. But that's that's like the Holy Spirit. Uh, I get on the conviction. I do want to say though, I want to say. I believe great days is ahead for us. <clears throat> I think God's going to bless us through this. And we don't have but two choices. And that's, that's like when you go through something hard in life, a trial. <clears throat> we'll, e we'll either drift away from Him or we'll glow closer. And I want to challenge, and again, I'm starting with me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, I'm just sharing my heart. <clears throat> <clears throat> but again, I believe great days is ahead for Blue Ridge View. And the reason I think this is because our God is great, as we've seen in this whole lesson. We've got to pray. We've got to pray, pray, pray. And we've got to pray to the Lord. It's, it's, no matter what, and, I, and I'm going to get off of this, but... <clears throat> Everybody, everybody in this deal uh, with this COVID-19, uh, everybody in the church, I don't think there's anybody in the church that don't want to do what's right with the church. But we've got to let God handle it. We've got to take our hands off of it and let God handle it. And uh, so, um, again, starting with me, <clears throat> we got to pray pray this is his church this is not our church but if we follow him and pray and stay focused it's not easy I promise you it's not easy but if we stay focused um, on him we're going to get a blessing out of this and again uh, I just want to encourage everybody I just want to encourage everybody uh, there's greater days headed in the future for Blue Ridge View and um, let's just uh, let's just let's turn it over to the Lord. That'd be the easiest thing to do anyway. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to close in prayer. And uh, what I've just said, I, I've said in love, because again, I've been I've been there myself. But uh, that small voice, the Holy Spirit, uh, tells me it's it's God's church. He's in control. He's still. A, the same God before this COVID ever hit. And so uh, just want to encourage you also, and uh, may not seem that way, but uh, I do. And I'm just going to close this on prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this prayer that uh, Paul wrote in Ephesians here. And Father, we just, uh, that's what prayer is all about. Prayer is honoring you. And prayer is uh, praying to you how great your power is and your love. And we've seen that in this lesson, Father. And I just lift up, um, I lift those up as, as fighting sicknesses now. Father, I just, uh, I just pray for, uh, I just pray, I want to pray though for your blessings. Your blessings is so, it's just incredible. It's incredible how you still bless us and, we uh, we don't give you any glory from it, and Father, that should be that should be the number one thing in our lives that we live a life, and uh, also we thank you, thank you for all your blessings that you do for us. Again, I just pray for everyone, Father. I just uh, I just thank you that uh, we're going to be able to get more services going, and uh, Father, you're going to bless us through this. There's no doubt about it. And uh, uh, again, I just uh, I want to encourage the people. And Father, again, thank you for all these blessings. But most of all, I thank you for Calvary. In your name I pray in Jesus Christ. Amen.